In this lecture, we will talk about the atomic emission spectroscopy, which is also known as flame atomic emission spectroscopy. Before we move towards the explanation, we must know about spectroscopy. What is spectroscopy? Spectroscopy is actually the interaction of the electromagnetic radiation with the matter. When electromagnetic radiation interacts with the matter, this is actually called spectroscopy. Now, this interaction may be of different types. It may be of a sense of absorption, means that these electromagnetic radiations may be absorbed by the matter, and this interaction may be in case of or in sense of emission, means that these electromagnetic radiations may be emitted by the matter, and uh, transmission, etc., some other interactions may also be seen. So, in this lecture, we will talk about the atomic emission spectroscopy. And this atomic emission spectroscopy is a kind of interaction in which what will happen? Our matter will do the emission of electromagnetic radiations. So let's come towards the point atomic emission spectroscopy. When your matter, consider atom. So when atom emits the electromagnetic radiations, okay? When atom, when you this atom emits these electromagnetic radiations, this interaction is called atomic emission spectroscopy. And this spectroscopy is also studied under the, the heading of uh, flame atomic emission spectroscopy. Now, why this atomic emission spectroscopy is given the name as flame atomic emission spectroscopy? Very simple. Because in order to emit the electromagnetic radiations for atom, we are actually taking the help of the flame. That's why this interaction is also known as flame atomic emission spectroscopy. So, coming to the point once again, atomic emission spectroscopy when your atom emits the radiation this is called atomic emission spectroscopy now coming towards the principle of atomic emission spectroscopy now what is the principle don't confuse yourself come to the point straight emission this atomic emission spectroscopy is functional under the principle of emission means the principle is emission now how the emission is done this is actually studied in the working do not try the working in the principle working is another topic another part of this topic and principle is the basic of the topic now what is the principle of the atomic emission spectroscopy that is the emission means that in this spectroscopy we actually study the emission process so now how this emission process takes place is studied in the working coming to our next point that is the question rises why do we go through atomic emission spectroscopy what is the reason behind very simple because we want to do the analysis and you know analysis is of two types qualitative quantitative suppose you take a sample analyze this sample that what kind of elements are present in this and what is the concentration of the specific element so if you are finding a specific element in a sample this kind of analysis is known as qualitative analysis and if you're finding the concentration of the specific element, that is known as quantitative analysis. Quanti, QT, QL, qualitative, quantitative. So by means of this spectroscopy, we can do both types of the analysis. We can do qualitative, we can also do quantitative analysis. Now coming towards the next step that how will we do the analysis? What are the instruments used and how will we do? Means we will study now the instrumentation and working of the atomic emission spectroscopy so in the instrumentation you must remember these instruments now what are the instruments the nebulizer and the flame source which is actually helping us in the atom formation so that's why it is also called as atomizer and here is the lens and here is the next instrument now is monochromator which is uh, the prism that we are studying now in this topic and here is the slit and here is the next instrument that is photo multiplier tube and the last one is detector now coming towards the working in the working we will understand this our emission that how this principle takes place so when you take your sample if your sample is in the solid form you must convert this into a liquid form by means of adding some kind of solvents and you will dissolve that sample in the solvent then you will add this uh, sample into the nebulizer and here it also has some kind of solvents so when this sample enters your sample is actually surrounded now by two types of solvents one is the one that you did in the beginning outside and the next solvent is present inside the nebulizer so now your sample is surrounded by two solvents so what will happen next is that this sample will be forwarded towards the atomizer the flame so what steps will occur here 
the very first is dissolvation my dears do not mix dissolvation with the dissolution now what is the difference between dissolution and dissolvation you took your sample you dissolved this sample in the solvent now this is your dissolved sample so when you injected this dissolved sample into the nebulizer and here another solvent is already available so when your this sample enters the nebulizer another solvent is waiting for this sample so now your sample will be actually covered by two types of the solvents this is actually called as dissolvate now what is dissolvation when your sample is broken when solvents are removed from your sample how when the sample reaches the atomizer the solvents attached to your sample will be evaporated the next step that occurs will be vaporization your sample will remain here and the sample will be converted into gaseous state so first thing happened was the removal of the solvents from the sample means the solvents vaporized and the second step was that vaporization in which the sample became vaporized so in this step the sample is now in gaseous state which is very easy for the flame to convert this gaseous sample to atom state now the atoms of the sample they will gain the heat energy from the flame what will happen your uh, atoms when they get the energy you know they are excited they move from the ground state to excited state and they are supposed to come back to become stabilized in the meanwhile it will emit the electromagnetic radiations and this is what we are supposed to study now when atom emits the electromagnetic radiation these emitted radiations what will happen first happened dissolvation in which your solvents vaporized second was vaporization in which your sample became vaporized and next was atomization in which our gaseous sample became in atomic state and the next one was excitation of these atoms the atoms became excited they emitted the radiation and uh, this is what called as emission when the radiations are emitted from the atom here in the flame these all steps will occur and the radiations from the atom will emit and the emitted radiations will move towards the lens so in the meanwhile we are also using a kind of mirror here in order to reflect the radiations that are moving to this side so now what will happen all the radiations will be directed towards the lens and from here these radiations will come towards the prism which is our monochromator which will split this photon to different colors and one color photons will be passed through the slit we are using this slit for the same reason to pass one color photon these photons will then come towards the photo multiplier tube now you can understand the function of this photo multiplier tube from the name as that photo multiplier tube means it is multiplying the photons now these photons will be multiplied in this tube so what will happen next is that a multiplied photons will then move towards the detector and the detector again the name is telling it will detect these photons and then the reading will be observed from that reading we can identify that what kind of element was present and what was the concentration of the specific element in this sample which we went through now and this analysis can be done by comparing your this reading with all ready noun or available reading so when you compare by that way you can easily identify the element and its concentration or you can say you can do both the types of analysis whether it is a qualitative or it is the quantitative so both types of analysis can be done that's it a little bit from my side about the atomic emission spectroscopy and if still you have any kind of question you can drop that in the comment box we'll come for the answers very soon thank you for watching